doesn't know me, my name is Marie and I currently work as a principal test automation engineer at Missing K. I also blog about testing and test automation at mariedrake.com and I have my Twitter handle added here if you have any sort of um, like follow-up questions. So in today's session, we'll be looking at um, doing visual testing with Cypress and Aptitools. Cool. Um, just a quick recap of what we've covered so far. So we now know that Cypress is um, a great tool for testing our front-end applications, but at the same time, it's also a great tool for testing our APIs. Um, with the added benefit of the Cypress test runner, you can now easily debug your APIs as well. Um, and again, for anyone who missed uh, the first two sessions, you can find the link for the slides here. Cool. So Cypress, among other things, um, it actually validates the structure of your DOM. Now, what this means is that it will, for example, verify if a button is displayed on the page. It will verify if you know, it has the correct text. But then, what about the look and styling of your app? Application. How can we test that um, visually our application looks good? We can, of course, use Cypress to verify that it has the correct CSS properties, but then um, our code would look very long and complex. Now, this is where visual testing um, comes in. With uh, visual testing, we're actually validating um, what our user sees on you know, different browsers, um, different viewports, or mobile devices. However, um, it's actually quite time consuming to do when you have to do it manually. So um, we have a spot the difference um, image here. Now imagine if someone um, told you that you have to test this manually every time you have to do a release. Or just copy the Okay, there are oh, there are um, about 30 differences in these two image, and you can probably find them after quite some time, but then it will um, like very um, much like time consuming and it will actually provide a very slow feedback loop. The obvious solution, of course, would be to automate this. So automated visual testing is actually not new. There's um, a lot of many tools out there which can help you um, with, with uh, visual testing. The idea with automated visual testing is you have um, a baseline image, which is basically like your source of truth. Now, every time there is um, a code change and our, and our automated test is run, um, a test image is um, generated. Um, the visual testing tool will then compare your test image with the baseline image and then check for differences. At the end, it will then report whether our test has passed or failed. Now, the problem with pixel by pixel comparison though is that it's really, really flaky. So even if you have, let's say, just one pixel difference, your test will fail um, even though on the human eye, the baseline image and test image looks exactly the same. Now, um, I've got an example here on one of the sites that we're actually testing. The baseline image here on the left and the test image here on the right looks exactly similar if you're going to compare it with just your eyes. But then the visual testing tool that we're using here has actually um, um, reported to us that there's quite a few mismatch um, differences. The other problem, so what if you're working with dynamic data? So I've got an example here. So we were using a different uh, visual testing tool here. And you can see here on the bottom um, um, of this image here on the right that there is a purple line here, which indicates that there is a data mismatch. Now, you can probably set the mismatch um, threshold to be slightly higher. So your test will only fail um, if it reached the threshold that you define. But the problem with this is um, you might actually miss some valid actual visual bugs and then you might deploy it to production. The other problem as well is um, most of these open source um, existing tools already, they only really run your tests on one or two browsers. So for example, um, Backstop.js, which um, is quite popular with the JavaScript community, um, only runs visual tests on Chrome headlessly. 
um, iSpy, which is another visual testing tool, um, hooks into your Selenium grid uh, to run your visual tests on different browsers. But still, it's a bit um, limited. So if you are using this, the um, Selenium Docker images, um, they only have images for Chrome and Firefox. Now, what if your users are also using Safari and IE? At the same time, if you're using Cypress, um, we've seen on the previous sessions that as of version 4.0, uh, you can run your tests on other browsers such as Firefox and Edge, but then again, they don't currently support Safari and IE. Um, how can you be um, like confident that when you deploy um, all these different changes to production, that uh, visually it will not have an impact to other browsers? So all these uh, different issues will eventually lead to a flaky testing pipeline, which then leads to visual bugs being deployed to production. So visual bugs, um, they affect most companies, uh, big or small. As an example, um, this image here is unfortunately the Sun website, which our team um, forgot to check. So it only affected um, tablet users, but still visually it looks really bad. Um, and then we've got here um, this image here, which I came across when I was um, just reading the news. And I noticed that the advert here is overlapping with the news content. Um, it wasn't that bad, but it looks very um, distracting to look at. And then on the right here, so I was trying to order food from Gusto, and then I found this um, food on the, on, on their menu, but I couldn't quite make out what the text was um, at the bottom because it was cut out. So now that um, we've established that visual testing is quite important, how can we solve uh, these different visual testing issues? Oh, so this is where um, Aptitools comes, um, comes in. And um, hopefully by the end of this um, session, you'll, you'll, you'll understand um, how, 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 how Aptitools can help you in um, testing your applications. Cool. So just a brief um, introduction. So unlike existing um, visual tools, Applitools uses advanced AI um, comparison algorithms to compare your images like a human would. It was actually um, founded on 2013, and it pretty much integrates with almost all testing frameworks, including native apps. So they have support for Selenium, Cypress, um, APU, WebDriver, IO, um, even Espresso and XUI testing basically integrate with almost all the existing frameworks already. So um, how? So since this is a Cypress Launch and Learn, we'll focus on how to write visual tests um, using these three different commands that we can hook into our Sci object. So the first command that we need to know is Sci.Eyes open. Now what this means is it actually initiates um, the Eyes SDK and you can pass in like parameters like the app name, which in this case is just called React Splash, and then the browser. So by default, if you don't specify the browser name, this will run on Chrome. Um, and then the second command that we have to um, use is the side that I check window, which actually takes a DOM snapshot of your page. And then lastly, um, once your test is finished, we have to call the side that I close to close the ICE SDK. Cool. So let's just um, go deeper to understand what is happening here. So whenever a call is made to side that I check window from your Cypress script um, from from your Cypress um, script um, aptitudes will extract a snapshot of your DOM um, notice that this is not an actual um, image um, like screenshot but a DOM snapshot instead so this is one of the reasons why aptitudes visual tests are faster on um, once the DOM snapshot is then uploaded um, to the Aptitools cloud, the Aptitools visual grid will generate the screenshots in the different browsers that you define in your configuration from this DOM snapshot. So once this, um, this different um, like screenshots are generated, the Aptitools eyes will then compare um, these images and then show the differences to you. Um, let's now look at the Applitools um, dashboard and also do some coding so that you can all put everything together. 
Um, the sample repo for this Launch and Learn um, can be found here. So after this session, like just feel free to play around with it. Um, you can also sign up for the Applitools um, like free trial account. So if you want to, um, you know, like um, play, play around with Applitools directly, um, you can do so. So first, um, I just want to give you an overview of the application that we're going to test. Cool. So this is just um, a um, React app that I've created a while back, which just shows you a sample image gallery. Um, it's using the Unsplash API to get all these different images. We have the search bar here, and then users can just type in um, their like image name, and then the images that are appropriate will come. Um, in terms of the code, so I've got here um, two versions of the visual test. Um, this V1 here is just your um, typical like Cypress test. So on the before each hook, we're just visiting the base URL. And um, so that our tests are not um, flaky, it's actually waiting for the Unsplash API um, to return some data before we can proceed into um, like doing our tests. So. Um, on our test here, we're just doing some basic assertions on the different elements. So we're checking that we have a header and it should have this text, it should have this subheader, um, it should have a search input, and finally it should have the uh, search icon. So I'm just going to run that test in the Cypress test runner just so you can also see that our test is currently passing. So at the moment, um, everything looks good, um, but then um, we can base um, we can um, improve this definitely. So I've got a version two um, spec file here, and what I'll do is I'll try to code this using the Applitools um, SDK. So on our before each, uh, most likely it will be similar. So I'm just going to copy this and then paste it on this um, spec file. And then for our actual test, I just want to say that it should look okay visually. And then we've seen that we have to use the three different commands. So first we have to open the eyes. Um, for anyone who's wondering as well, so if um, if you need to have IntelliSense completion for the different um, Applitools command, you just need to import this Applitools iCypress and reference it to your spec file. So um, in this case, we have to pass in an, an, an object. So our app name, let's call it React Flash. Um, we can pass it a batch name. So a batch name in Applitool. So um, imagine we have like five different tests. Um, and if we have a batch name added, all those five tests will be grouped into this one batch. So I'll just say our batch name is called um, image search. And then in terms of the browser, so I'm just gonna run it on Chrome, but I want it, um, but I want to specify the width and the height. So let's say width is 1024, height is 768. Cool. Um, once we've initiated the eyes SDK, we just want to do eyes check window, which will take a DOM snapshot. And then finally, we want to do side that eyes. Oops, close. So um, to close the ICE SDK after um, it's finished with the snapshot. Um, just gonna stop this and then click version two. So you can see here, cool. So um, you might notice that our test run is still running. Um, this is because we have to wait for um, the Applitools um, server to process our image, but it doesn't actually impact the performance of our test. Um, before you actually run your Applitools test as well, so when you sign up for a free trial, you have to um, export your Applitools API key, which I've done already, that's why our test is passing. Um, so now, if I go back to the Applitools dashboard, I'm just going to close this one, refresh the page. Oh, 
po. So, um, because this is um, a new baseline, um, it act, uh, let me just delete this, close this. So, it actually um, detected that there's no baseline image. So, um, if it's the first time that you're running tests on the Applicos dashboard and you don't have any test image, by default, the test will just pass. And um, once we, for example, run that test again, if you want to do some, um, like, you know, test to see that the, um, that the whole comparison thing is working, we just have to run our test again. So I'm just going to do that quickly to demo to you that on our next test run, um, the baseline and test image will both uh, be um, present. Cool. So now you can see here that we have um, a test that's passing here. Um, and then you can see that the baseline and test images are both um, similar. Cool. Now, what if um, we make some amendments? So let's say um, rather than going to the first page, we want to return different data. So let's imagine that this is a dynamic um, application where um, every time we're returning new data. So um, if, if you're running it on, let's say on the V1, our test will still pass, um, but then you might not have noticed that the data um, that, that it returned is dynamic. Whereas if we run it on applicables, um, we'll see later that it will actually detect the um, dynamic data. So I'm just going to go back here. Oh, it's not running yet. Time out. Uh, I think I've hard coded it as, as one. So I'm just gonna. Mm -mm, API. Ah, okay. So because it's it's hard coded to um one, so I'm just going to change it, and then let's then look. Oh, so if you notice, the images are now different. So if we then go back to Aptitude's dashboard, we should see that our test is failing as expected. Cool, um, refresh. Cool, so every time there is um, a failing test, um, obviously you would need to resolve it um, manually. Um, so if you look here, there's um, some mismatch on the image here. So um, if, if you don't care um, what the data content would look like, so I mentioned at the beginning that um, AppDetools uses advanced AI um, algorithm to compare the two images. So what you can do is you can add um, a region here. So they have different types of region that you can use. Um, the ignore region basically ignores um, this region, so it will not be um, like compared by app details. Um, in this case, I don't want it to be ignored because I still want the layout uh, to be validated. So I'm actually going to use this um, region called layout. Now, what layout region is, is it only cares about the layout and it doesn't care whatever content you have. So what I'll do is I'm just going to um, do the layout region here. I'm just going to make some amendments because it can still see some purple areas. Um, layout. Cool. So um, now, now that we have the layout region added, um, when we run this um, next time and, the, and a different sort of data um, comes in, then our test will still pass because we've added the layout region here. Um, in terms of the other region, so 
um, content region. So if you only care what the data looks like, but then you don't care about the styling. So for example, it will have different colors, then you can use content region. Um, a strict region, so this is the um, AI comparison. So this is uh, the default and the floating region. So if you have like animations and you want to ignore um, like the, um, the uh, movements of your element in the DOM, then you can add a floating region. Cool, so what I'll do is I'll accept these changes, close this one, and then we can then um, save this. Cool. So now that we've seen that we can use all this um, different region, so let's then um, explore the scenario that um, what if we're introducing some new visual changes into our um, application. So let's say that um, one of our developers have decided to, you know, introduce some changes on this uh, search component. So let's say we want to remove this search icon. And let's say I want to add um, like a styling um, attribute here. Uh, wait, baby. Um, are you watching Mickey Mouse? Yeah. Okay. And let's just say that we want the background color to be blue, for example. Um, and I'm also going to add um, a new component as well. So let's say that we've actually introduced yeah. an actual new feature. Me, mommy. Yeah, baby, mama is busy. It's from me. Okay, wait a minute. Mommy, tell me you. Uh, sorry, guys. My daughter. She loves getting involved in the land, doesn't she? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just going to quickly just make um, this new feature called the footer. Um, this will just be like a simple component which will just return like a new um, footer. So that um, I'm, I actually just want to show you that there will be um, three new visual differences. So I'm just going to say copyright 2020. And we want to export this footer and then add it into our app. Cool. So if we go back to our version one, so imagine this new developer has pushed in the changes. Um, it didn't actually detect that the background color is blue. Um, and it didn't detect that we have this new um, footer here. So in terms of like modifying this test, we would have to, you know, make some amendments as well on our test to make sure that we validate that the footer exists and that this um, search, you know, bar has the correct styling. However, it did detect one, um, um, one bug, which is the missing search icon. Um, on the other hand, if we run it on the app tools, So you can see here that, okay, our test is passing, but then um, if we go back to the app details dashboard, you'll see that um, the test is, is uh, failing and it will detect all these different issues. So I'm just going to wait for this to finish. Um, go back here, refresh the page. Oh. So if we then inspect at all the differences, um, you can basically highlight all the difference. So it detected that the, um, that the um, background is, you know, blue. The next difference as well is that it's missing the search icon. And then next we have this um, new copyright that's added in. So you can see here that um, you don't have to do a lot of maintenance on your Cypress test compared to um, like the version one where you have to make some amendments on your test while you introduce new features. All you need to do is basically review the test image that we've seen here on Aptitals. Now, if you think that some of them are like a valid bug, so for example, we want to raise the bug that the search icon is actually missing. So you can do that straight from Apple Tools. So you can add um, a bug region. So we can, um, we can add some annotation here. And then we can say missing search icon. 
and then you can um, choose to fail the test so that when the test is run next time and if the search icon is still not visible, then this test will um, still fail. So go ahead and um, reject the differences if you think that this is a valid bug. And oh, I forgot to save, so I'm just going to save this one. Cool. Um, so what's great about this is um, it will actually speed up your development workflow. So at the moment at uh, News UK, we're currently using Apply Tools to test um, our design components. So we're actually building a collection of um, reusable components that the different teams will use. So we're using um, Apply Tools to, you know, to check the differences on different browsers and different viewports. So what I want to show you next is how easy it, um, it is to run your tests on the different and browsers. So if we go back to um, the version 2, so we've said here that we only want our test to run on um, Chrome. So what if I also want to run it on, let's say, Safari? So we just need to basically um, add a new configuration here. So I think now it will be an array because we're passing in um, different values. Uh, and here I'm just saying that um, to make it more distinct, um, I want this to be um, Chrome. I think it's small c. Yeah. And then on my next configuration, I want it to run on Safari. And then let's say we also have to cover um, like mobile emulators. So for that, um, you can just say device name. And then this is actually based on um, Chrome emulator, not the real device. So you'll have to pass in um, the name. So let's say I want to run it on like iPhone 5. Yeah, maybe an iPhone SE. And then let's say some of our users also use iPad. So I just want to... Um, run it on iPad as well. Cool. Um, so now, if we then run this test, oh, I think now it's 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 not running because it's um, automatically um, checked by the Cypress test runner. Cool. So you might notice that the test time here is longer than expected because I'm only using um, the free trial account. Um, but you can set this concurrency level um, to maximum like 100, I think. So then your test will actually run much faster. But because this is just um, a free trial account, I've got my maximum concurrency set to one. So now if I refresh the page, you can see here that we have uh, three new different images, but then my image, like, oh, I didn't load. Uh, there must be up some problem with the unsplash API. But anyway, um, let's just go ahead. So in this case, um, we've detected that, that there's no baseline, and you can see here that it's running on Chrome iPad. In this case, it's running on on Chrome um, 81, but on an iPhone 5 um, like emulator. And then this one, we have um, changes on Safari. And then this, we have changes in Chrome. So you can see that um, it's quite easy to expand and add more configuration. Um, and then um, I think you can group them as well. So let's just imagine the scenario where these are all expected changes. Um, the main problem with existing tools is that you have to um, like manually update each of the baseline. So um, Aptitools has this feature to uh, group the different like images that are quite similar. Um, so I think this should group something, maybe not because it's on like different viewports. Um, but on one of our projects, if it detects that you know the changes are quite similar on some of the viewports, it will automatically um, group them. Um, so we can just go ahead and okay, if we want to. Um, like basically approve all these different images, then we can accept all of them. And then if, if everything is not expected, then we can um, reject. So in this case, we can just do accept, for example. 
and then save. But I think this test will um, still fail because we've added this um, region where um, if the missing search icon is still missing, then our test will still um, fail. But then this T are all passing. Cool. Um, what other features? Ah, okay. Um, so if if you want to speed up, let's say the debugging um, flow. So if I just go back here. Um, Aptitools has a feature called uh, root cause analysis. So it will actually show you um, what the um, issue was or um, what changes were made. So all you need to do is um, if you just highlight this one and it will basically tell you that, okay, the color for this, um, it was changed from this, you know, values to this values. So then you can then say to your development team or even you, you can make the, um, like the actual changes in the code base and all, all you need to do is basically like change it back to this values and um, it's just like a really handy feature um, that you can use because it will automatically do some analysis on where the visual um, issue was introduced. Um, the other thing that I just want to show is um, if your team is doing um, A-B testing, um, uh, most most of um, like companies that I've worked for, they've they know now they they've now um, done some sort of like um, um, experiment to see which uh, feature would work better for their customers. So you can also do some A/B testing with um, app tools. So with A/B testing, you can basically create more than one baseline. So let's say, for example, that, okay, this is an, an, an actual new feature and we want to add this as one of our baseline as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete this one because imagine it's an actual expected feature. Um, and if we want to create a new one, um, without search icon. Um, so now, if we save this, uh, because it matched the other um, baseline from our A-B test, then our test will pass. So the next time you run this test, whether or not you have the search icon or if it's, you know, um, like not showing, then as long as you have the different baseline variation here for your, for, um, for your A-B testing, then your test will pass. Cool. Go ahead and save that. And that's pretty much it in terms of um, introduction to um, Cypress and Apply Tools. Um, Apply Tools um, is 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 a paid tool because um, it's 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 it has this dashboard and it's using some advanced algorithm. So um, I guess if if you um, you know. Um, if, if, if you have to make that decision on your team, whether or not you have to use a paid tool or just stick with um, the existing open source for the visual testing, um, it's up to you. But um, for our case, we've just noticed that um, we have all these different existing tools out there that does pixel by pixel comparison, but we always end up with a flaky visual test pipeline. We've, um, exp we've basically um, experimented with uh, different visual testing tools out there, but we always end up with the same problem that even if it's just a one pixel difference, our test will fail. Um, now that one of our team is using um, Apply tools, um, even the designers in our team can now get involved. So they can just log in into the Apply tools dashboard and they can approve or reject the baseline, um, not the baseline, but the test images. And it just makes our team um, more like, more like, um, more like, um, like, what was the word? Um, oh, it's talking in my mouth, like, um, like collaborative, that's it. So it just really gives us a faster feedback loop. And their dashboard is just really handy because we can see here, um, you know, if our batch test is passed or failed, we can also um, raise um, bug tickets directly here, and then it will get linked to our Jira um, account, which is quite handy. Um, and one of the other features that we actually like is the uh, baseline um, branching. So with Apply Tools, they have this concept of um, branch baseline. 
So at the moment, because I only have um, one branch in um, my GitHub repo, it only has this default branch. But let's say you're working on a team, and your um, co and and your colleague has a new branch. And on that branch, it will actually introduce some new um, expected visual changes. Now you don't just you don't want to necessarily update the baseline already because your other colleagues who are using like different branches, their tests will fail. So similar with the GitHub concept, um, Applitools has this concept of uh, baseline branching and merging where um, each of the different um, branches will have their own set of baseline. And once your um, branch in GitHub has been merged, then Applitools will also branch um, the baseline from that branch to the default branch. So it just makes uh, the whole development workflow um, quite good. Cool. Um, just gonna switch back uh, to the presentation. Where's it? How can I just? Oh, no. There you go. So if you want um, additional um, resources, I've linked here um, some really um, interesting um, video course from Test Automation um, University in regards to more visual testing validation. And then you can also look at their Applitools blog to see how other customers are using Applitools and what's their success criteria. So in that said, um, if there's any sort of questions, um, feel free to ask me. Yeah, I have a question. Um, yeah. Is there any way to get Apply Tools results and have your Cypress test fail? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, once you've integrated this with the CI, because at the moment we're we're um, using the test runner. So once you have, um, so so for example, if you're running it like headlessly, um, if your tests fail. Um, it will actually say that it failed because of uh, mismatch found and it will give you a link to the Applitos dashboard that you can just go straight into. So once you have that link, it will show you what the difference, um, what the different failures are on, 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 on that particular test. And that only happens headlessly? Um, so yes, yeah, so I think they have a bug um, if you run it with the test runner. Um, you don't necessarily see the results as well. So that's why um, when you see this, like it's just like failing on the after all, but then um, the eyes check window and eyes at close are still passing. But if you run your tests, um, just like with the Cypress run, it will actually report that there were mismatch um, found. Um, so hopefully they do fix this um, like issue on the Cypress test runner. Cool, thank you. Well, you're welcome. Any other questions? Cool. Um, if there's no more questions, um, I'll, I'll leave um, this one so you can have 15 minutes um, back. But um, hopefully you, um, you learned something new today, um, that visual testing with applicables, if, you know, if, if, if it's something that you want to consider and if you have um, like a flaky visual test pipeline and if you want to run your tests on different browser, um, then you can give applicables a try. Um, for our next um, Lunch and Learn, I think I'll be doing something around iframes so we can explore um, how to test iframes using Cypress. So thanks very much, Marie. Thank you. Yep. Have a really good day. Thank you. Um, really interesting talk. And yeah, thanks everyone for coming along. Hope hope you're finding these useful. Um, as I say, we're we're going to be uh, running another one in in two weeks, um, and we've got a number of different um, events lined up for the testing community in May. So we've got over ten different events, all different topics as well. So. Be sure to check out Tactful and Quality Advocates. Uh, but for now, have a great day, stay safe, and thanks for coming along. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you very much, guys. Bye-bye. Cheers, Marie. Bye. -bye. Cheers,